And all of a sudden, I looked over and I saw this beautiful dog. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful dog. What kind of dog is that? She's a Shetland sheep dog, seven years old. Her name's Izzy. Izzy. Izzy, is there Izzy? Not my baby. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, why are you in this area today? Well, I'm from Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, my husband's a cardiovascular surgeon. Right. I have five children, but my youngest is 20, so I have a little bit of a lot more extra time on my hands than I did when he was at home in high school. Right. And um, I became aware of a Shetland Sheepdog here in Ilion that had been sentenced to death by a Judge James Van Slyke for nipping his owner's granddaughter in the face. And this very same thing happened to me 29 years ago with my eldest son, who was three, and I had a Shetland Sheepdog that nipped him in the face, a worse bite than this little girl had. And um, although at that time my husband was furious and, you know, we thought, oh, the children aren't going to be safe with the dog, I said, no, I mean, I had, I had let him roughhouse with that dog and not stopped it, and I felt responsible, and I said, no, I'm just going to pay attention. I'm not going to let that happen again. And so that dog lived another 10 years, and I had four more children, and that dog was perfect mm -hmm. the rest of his life. And, uh, we were walking through the uh, dining room here. Uh, she was to my right, Jack was to my rear right, and I was... Uh, we were just coming through here, and all of a sudden, I just, uh, I heard, you know, rah, 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 real quick, and I turned, and Gia was on the ground, and I didn't know what happened until I looked. I saw, oh my God, Jack bit her. I didn't see what happened. I was like in shock. I couldn't believe it. And uh, that was, we called 911. Ambulance came. I was in the driveway with them. We, I got her right in the ambulance with her, and they brought us right to the hospital. And the animal control came, and you know, and they, uh, they took, you know, Nelly ended up taking Jack to the Humane Society and he's, uh, he's been there ever since. And, and so what did the doctor say about Gia? The doctor said that she definitely had a wound and that she would need stitches, but overall she would be fine. So oh, Helen, what are we doing at the Stephen Swan Humane Society? We're going to come here and see if they will let us see Jack and um, I'm kind of thinking that they're not, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Jack's here, but you, you can't talk about it. Jack's in the middle of the court case. We're just holding the dog here. I'll try to get closer to you so you can get away from the barking here. <laughs> we're just holding the dog here under uh, order of the court, and we're making sure that Jack is taken care of by our staff as we do with other dogs that occasionally come to us under these circumstances. That's our role here is just a caretaker. I'm like rough roughhouse with the dogs rather than just go over to them and pet them. Wait, yeah. say that one more time? She wanted to like rough house with uh, the dogs rather than go over and just pet them. Just like nicely pet him instead yeah. of just go like, <laughs> you know. Huh, okay. So um, when I was at, the Humane Society, I was told that there would be a hearing in approximately five days. I was notified that the hearing was on Monday at 11.30 in the morning, and I also received a ticket for no license for my dog. I assumed that this hearing was regarding the no license. When I got to court, there was the town attorney, um, the animal control, the judge, my daughter, and myself. Apparently, what I learned at that point is that the hearing was for was to determine if Jack was a dangerous dog. I had no attorney present. I was never offered an attorney. Because you thought it was just for the ticket. Because I thought it was just for the, the dog ticket. Gia, what do you need? Where are you going? You need another cookie here. Here you go. <laughs> so um so at that point. I t he, the judge says, do you have anything to say? And I explained to him that I went to go get a license for the dog. And when I went to the town hall, they told me I could not get a license because it was within 15 days of his rabies vaccine expiring. I also explained to him that I had a home for Jack out in the country um, with 
two people who raised Shelties. They have no children. They were aware that he bet in the past that he bit a Gia, and um, they were more than willing to take him. The judge then said, I've heard all the evidence, and at this point I determine that the dog is going to be euthanized. So I again said that he had a home somewhere, and the judge said, if you want to appeal, that this is my decision, if you want to appeal this, um, then you need to go to a higher level of court. You need to go to a Nida County Court and appeal it. You need to do that within 30 days, but let me warn you, the money clock is ticking. So those were the last words I heard from the judge. At that point, I left the courtroom. I was just shocked. I didn't and know you meant that you that you, you had to pay for to have Jack put in a facility like a day yes. or something. Yes. They kept him in the cage for how long? He's been labeled dangerous by the court. So any dog that's labeled dangerous by the court, they're sequestered in the back. I understand it's like in the very back of Stephen Swan and um, and you, you have to leave them in a cage. You're not supposed to take them out because they're dangerous. So until last night, he has been in that cage almost a month. Wow. He's not let out to go to the bathroom, to get in the grass. Until last night, they did do that. And I understand, understand that he lost his voice from barking because Shelties do bark a lot. It's mm -hmm. probably, you know, one of their biggest drawbacks, but it doesn't bother me. As long as my Sheltie is with me, she's happy she doesn't bark. But if they're by themselves, they're very, very intelligent, and um, they're they're so sensitive. And then for this Sheltie to be in a cage just broke my heart because I thought this could have happened to me 29 years ago or any time. I mean, if a toddler came up to my dog Izzy and she was sleeping and fell on her, I guarantee you Izzy would turn around and nip. Well, I called two veterinarians yesterday, and I explained the situation. I showed the picture, and he says that dog is probably one of the most docile, meek dogs in the world. Exactly. They're great for families. They're wonderful with youngsters. Jack is your son. Oh, really? Yeah. God, how, how does Chloe feel about Jack? Huh? <laughs> you think? Well, Chloe, they, they, that's all they used to do was play in the yard out here, you know, just, you know, uh, how do you say that? Just, you know, just like, you know, playing with each other. This they play in the yard all together all the time. I take them for walks all the time together, up at the golf course, up in the country. They loved it. They love it. She misses Jack. You know? Yeah. She's just like, you know, lonely. You know. Like in like the time though, I mean, I don't know. She kinda gets used to it like anything else. You know, but uh you know. We'll, we'll get him. We'll, we'll we'll survive this. We'll get him placed somewhere else, you know. Yeah. We'll get him placed somewhere else. And, uh, things will work out for him. He doesn't deserve where he is now, but you know, even the uh, what was that? The animal control officer from the other county there said that he should have been home after his 10-day quarantine. That's what he was telling Nailey today. He should be already home. But it's in, it's in the courts now, you know. So. Mm. You, that you did that you thought, thought help would help Jack. What was the what did you what was your thought process? Well, I figured first I tried to get get it, you know on the radio the the news and you know get people the community involved because it's a very small community here. Right. Um, and. I figured if I got the word out, you know, what was happening, what was going on, that people would be outraged, and it's exactly what happened. People right. were just totally in shock over this, and then the people have, the people that have, um, and we've had people from all over the world. I mean, we've had money come from France, um, Canada, so you started, donations. So you started a, a Facebook page, a Save Jack Facebook right, page. Right, yeah, yep. And, um, and how many sort of likes are you up to? We're almost up to 3,000 as of right now. And this this was started on um, April fourth. We started it, right? So it grew pretty 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 quick. Yeah. And we have also have a petition, um, change.org, and that's got about five thousand signatures. Wow. Also, they can only count the ones in in the U.S. So what are you hoping? Um, you know, so where where are we now with with Jack? Well, right now um, we're appeal well we've already appealed it and. Um, now it's going to go to, it's no longer going to be in the town um, 
in Hartford Town Court. It's now going to go to Oneida County Court. Okay. And um, if that doesn't resolve it, then we'll, go, we'll take it to the Supreme Court. Um, I still have Jack's father, his sister, and his brother. Okay. Um, in fact, I have five Shelties at this time. Yes. But I'm willing to take him back with my dogs as being the breeder and, and keep him with my dogs because I don't feel a threat from him at all. I have no small children. I have other dogs. I have other other dogs from the same father and mother. And so I'd really like to take Jack. And that way Natalie and her family can come and see Jack whenever they want. Oh, come and take him back. And how do you know maybe a year from now or so when the granddaughter gets a little older, maybe Natalie and her family want Jack back. And they'd be welcome to take him back. They've been a good home for him but I'd like to see Jack kept available to them because he is part of their family too.